Welcome to Building a Tableau Culture by Learning and Growing. I'm Jennifer Hirsch. I'm from Janssen Pharmaceutical, part of the J&J family of companies. What I'd like to share with you today is about our project that's called Envision. And I have four um, key topics that I will um, discuss with you. The first is I'd like to share a little bit more about why we need a visualization intervention. Provide you with some background of J&J &J and how the pharmaceutical sector fits in. Start by describing our grassroots project, how Envision really got started, and creating that compelling case for change. And then finally, uh, detailing out our pathway to full Tableau Im implementation and uh, describing the journey that's going to get us there. So these first few slides are just a sample of the standard slides that we historically, as well as currently, provide to senior management and decision makers across our organization. As we are a 100-plus-year-old company, change is extremely difficult, and we just love our PowerPoint and uh, uh, Excel static reporting. This includes bar charts, of course, the, the, the famous stacked bar, and the pie chart that actually includes a grand total as part of that chart. Yes, very embarrassed here. And then the comparison bar chart that also includes a grand total. So you can see here why we totally need a visualization intervention. So I'll get back to that in a moment. But before we dive into the, uh, our Envision, um, which is our primary topic uh, for discussion today, we'd like to just level set you on Johnson & Johnson and, and, the and the pharmaceutical um, sector. So J&J is a large multinational organization, which I'm sure you all are very aware of. We are a global leader in healthcare. We have more than 250 operating companies that, uh, that are in 175 countries. We also have over 100,000 employees worldwide. J&J is organized into three sectors. These sectors are divided into medical devices and diagnostics, which uh, really is, is leading our sales. Pharmaceutical is catching up, not so far behind there. And then our consumer sector, um, which I'm sure you're all familiar with, our, our famous baby care line. To spotlight pharmaceutical, last year we had over $25 billion in sales. And our pharmaceutical pipeline at J&J has been prolific over the past couple of years. I'm sure you've probably seen some highlights in the news. We are world, ranked number eight worldwide um, and number six um, in the biotech uh, market ranking. We have extremely strong uh, new product launches. We're fastest growing launches in Europe and Japan and U.S. leader in new product sales. Our pipeline has, has just been um, fantastic. Ten new product approvals since 2009, and uh, we, we, we lead the industry um, with, with those new product approvals as well. So you can see we're very large. And so, again, stating the case that change is really difficult, how do you embark on such an innovative, culture-changing uh, project such as this? So getting started. I'm sure as most of you uh, in the room have experienced, uh, starting grassroots is the best way to get going to try to create some sort of positive energy. Our grassroots effort quickly became part of an organizational-wide project. We did this by creating a burning platform to get senior management engaged in support. By demonstrating all the work and making it transparent to the inefficiencies that it takes to integrate our information, and then really the, the, the value that, that, that we get at the static reporting that's done over and over again throughout the organization. How we selected Tableau, we, we, we really took an internal and external assessment approach. We conducted multiple proof of concepts, and we looked at Forrester Gardner reports. We had some internal uh, homegrown visualization tools that we looked at. Clearly, based off of our assessment criteria, Tableau was our best fit for the future. And uh, as well as, uh, as this effort even fed into our J&J &J infrastructure, and Tableau is now a platform offering across J&J, &J, which is very exciting as well. So in order to move forward with an organizational-wide effort, we thought it was really important to have a vision of, to, to ensure that we know where we're going in this space. And the vision is about making insight-driven decisions from an integrated single source of truth. So this project became a little bit bigger, well, much bigger than, than, than implementing Tableau. It became about understanding our data and our infrastructure, 
how do we look at our data analytically, as we're right now just used to collecting information, and then how do we turn that into insights? So today, our world, and again, I'm sure several of you share this, this same, um, same world as ours, is data's all over. It's in disparate systems that don't talk, can't connect the data. Ultimately, folks are putting their data and connecting it manually um, in, in Excel or offline databases. Well, that's not conducive um, and, and, and does not harness the power of visualization and data integration. So the, uh, our vision here is having a common source of data so that we can really resolutionize how we analyze and visualize business information in order to gain these new insights. Okay, so what I'd like to share with you with the bulk of the presentation is our journey and envision. And I'm going to spotlight some critical milestones throughout our path that demonstrate how, how we're doing this, not only as an organization um, implementing a new tool, but from a cultural perspective, from a capability perspective, as well as how do we support this in our steady state. So as you can see, this is a multi-year journey. And management embraced this long-term organizational commitment, understanding that to take a change like this on is not going to happen overnight and not just, hey, let's bring a tool in and, and let's, let's see what we can do with it. We really take a, a, a methodical approach. And how we're doing that is, is bringing the organization with us through what we're calling a pod model. So the pod model is, is looking at our organization from a cross-organizational perspective and bringing people that support, say, a, a function or a therapeutic area. They support an aspect of the business, but they do that very individually. Uh, we're a matrix organization, but I argue we're actually in boxes. And if you're in one box, it's very difficult to talk to the box that's sitting right next to you. So how do we foster this cross-collaboration that needs to happen um, you know, in this analytical community? So we created this pod approach. And that pod is then focused on answering a business question, and they deliver develop a visualization that does that and supports that specific area that, that is in the business that, they, that, that they're in. And the benefits here are, 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 are pretty dramatic because we're building that knowledge base within the organization, transparency to information, building the, um, the, the, the blocks that are necessary for creating that inter, um, integrated warehouse by centralizing the business um, information and enabling the business to learn and grow together. So a core team isn't telling the business what they need. It's the business that, that is closest to it that's driving it. So it might take longer, but that they own it at the end of the day, as well as they're building those collaborative connections that have never existed before, and now we hope to make those, um, strength, uh, to, to make those exist and strengthen them as we continue. So we call this the pod ecosystem, and it's our ability to manage across the organization. And we broke our complex organization uh, into really three segments of the business. Enterprise portfolio pods, therapeutic area, that's all a part of managing projects um, and get them to the patients that need those pro uh, products. Functional pods that are primarily um, focused on executing uh, those strategies from, from the therapeutic areas. And each of those uh, aspects of the business have analytics, have an analytical community that exists within finance, project management, operations, and, and strategic. And then in the core of this is our team, the Envision and Data Warehouse core team. And so we're the connectors. We're, we provide the framework, the structure, the tools of how each of these pods will work so that we move together in a very thoughtful, manageable way. So we have to practice what we preach or else we, we wouldn't be doing this. So I'd like to share a little, um, our, our cross viz viz. And what this does is show all of our current phase one vizs um, that we call there. This is the place where we're starting. Each viz, it, uh, there's several vizs in, in each part of those business segments between the portfolio or enterprise, therapeutic areas, and functions. And you can see what we have called out our, our timelines here and the major, um, the, the major uh, milestones within those timelines. So I can click on one of these vizs, and I'll be able to get more details about that viz. What is the business question that this viz visualization is trying to answer? Where are my upcoming milestones or past due milestones? Who is the pod leader and their team that is working on this? 
Uh, again, it gives me a little bit more insight into the milestone and then their activity details. The next milestone I'd like to call out is how we are implementing these phase one visits. As I described, the visualization um, and the envision part of Tableau is highly integrated um, to the warehouse piece, and we call this inputs to outputs. And what's really important is that we want this to move together. And so what that means is that we're not going to have integrated data at the get-go here. So we needed to create a framework of how we get the business to be comfortable in working in this space. So delivering these phase one visualizations is all based off of, hey, guys, you're doing it today. Show us what you're doing today. They're taking data from their source systems, figuring out how it connects, could be lookup tables, could be you know some sort of macro, to put it together in what we're calling Excel smash ups. Great, you're doing that already. Now let's see what's possible to answer your questions in Tableau and let's visualize it and go through a process of being able to develop what those mock-ups or those visits could look like. So once we have what we're calling the beta version viz, that then creates the foundation for what should be in the warehouse. So if we're missing data elements or we need new calculations that should be stored in the warehouse, what are those? Let's identify them, document them, and then they inform um, the warehouse on how the data should be structured to then feed that visualization. So once the warehouse becomes operational, then the smash up goes away, and then we're in what we're calling a direct connect, fully deployed environment, where the visualization is updated directly from the warehouse. I'd like to show you just a little bit about our documentation. There's a tremendous amount of documentation that goes into this whole process. In order to make sure we understand the data flow of how it's coming out of the source systems into these smash ups and then ultimately into the visualizations. And so we have a, a lot of templates and, and, and ways of documenting that to make sure that we're structuring it the way we need for the future. The next viz I'd like to share is one of the phase one visits that are that's in progress. And this is um, a, a demand supply gap analysis. And the demand supply gap analysis uh, is done in the capacity management organization. And it looks at uh, by overall organization. So the demand represents the resources that are needed to get the work done from the project teams. The supply is who I have available to do that work. And the difference is, is, is the gap. Essentially, I might have to make some decisions in order to figure out how to get that work done. As you can see, the X's represent where my demand is greater than my supply. So I'm going to have to either make some decisions or maybe understand some more analytics on, to, on what's driving that. So if I look at efficiencies in here, because each of the functions are driving towards having an efficiency factor so that they know their, their processes are getting better um, or they're making changes in how they get their work done. So I want to look at each uh, of, the, of the gap as it relates to the functional efficiencies. So if I do that, actually I don't have a, uh, an issue with my gap as now 15% is my threshold, the gap is now less than that. So this becomes an important management tool and part of our self-service model that the business is able to help themselves in order to, um, you know, to understand what's happening um, within their areas. What this also this does, a big part of our business, um, is understanding how, how things change. So looking at different time periods and what are the drivers of those changes. So as you can see here, this is our previous um, forecast period. So we have a monthly, what we call continuous forecast. It takes snapshot of, of the work and the related resources um, that it takes to do that work on a monthly basis. And then we need to understand, okay, well, what has changed and how does that impact my resources? I can kind of see, I can see here what's driving it. So I can look at it right now, as you can see, it's on a functional level, but I might also want to look at it by, um, management um, therapeutic area, or TA, as it's also called. So I can see um, what, are, what are the management TAs and their big drivers of change. If I want to dive into infectious disease, I can do that. And then to look at infectious disease by um, function organization, 
I can then see, okay, what's in here, what's, what's driving that, and a big reason for change is in uh, the clinical space. Okay, moving on, I'd like to share a, um, about our learning strategy. So we created a pod model to get the business uh, moving forward um, on their own using, using uh, a lot of the standards and frameworks that we came up with as, as the Envision core team. We then developed an approach for how we're going to deliver these phase one visualizations. Now we needed to start focusing on how we're going to um, build this community, an organization that has the skills necessary to do this on their own. So again, we're, we needed to look at our organization as a whole, very critical. And we came up with a community-based learning and change management program. So we can look at our organization by enterprise and, and the five therapeutic areas that we have and the 13 functions that we have, but that still segments um, our organization into two small pieces. At the end of the day, they're either bottom liners, senior management, they're drill downers, that means that's most of the business that needs to figure out what do they have on their plate and what do they need to get done. They're insiders or analytical folks that are supporting the business in, in some form or fashion. And then the folks that are making the insiders' uh, jobs a little bit easier. Visualizers, so those are our developers that really know the ins and outs of the data model, um, and the enforcers, which is all about how do we manage our data in terms of structured business rules and processes. Each of these five segments have um, slightly different needs and that they not only have a learning curriculum that they have associated with it, but there's also a big change management aspect, particularly in the bottom liners where you know, their action causes further reaction. And, they, and it's real critical to set the right behaviors so that it has that trickle-down effect. On the insider site, they're all used to just data gathering, just spending 90% of their time putting information together and only 10 or 20% of the time analyzing it for insights. We're turning that paradigm around, but these guys need skills in order to, in order to accomplish that. And that's a big part of what we've been focusing on these past several months of doing just that. And we treat this community together, uh, the, the, the insiders, visualizers, and enforcers. So how do we do this? Again, looking at a novel way, training can be viewed as very boring, um, not interactive. We really needed to take another innovative approach here. And so we came up with study hall, since this whole premise of Envision is all about learning a new way of working. And study hall is a, is a whole curriculum around providing on-site, hands-on, interactive, um, foundational skills to these communities across the organization. So we're bringing these insiders, visualizers, and enforcers from, from the enterprise function TA teams together, working cross-functionally, face-to-face. We divide them into face-to-face um, to, -face to provide the foundational elements and then divide them into small teams so that they can then further those, develop those skills over a, a three-month period and uh, answering a business question. And they do this with support. They have support from the core team as well as a teaching assistant uh, that is at their disposal to help them when they get stuck or when they need to understand how to connect their data into Tableau or when they need some help with actually making their, their vis into a dashboard. We conducted two sessions already, um, one, in, one actually um, in May, one in June. And we did this with about 45, uh, 40 to 45 participants. Um, we, we purposely kept them close together so that we can have a community of support um, for each other as they're across different sites um, and that they're, they're as close as they possibly can to, to, to the learning. So huge benefits here. We're giving these guys hands-on training and we're giving them the fundamental skills around you know, best practice for visualization, how to take a business question and break it down into what's the uh, decision and result statement how to have the dialogue with, with management and their sponsors um, to get to what that right decision result statement should be, how to prototype it, and then ultimately how to create a visual. So that critical thinking approach is absolutely critical, as well as doing this in a, in a collaborative environment. 
So folks that have never worked together before, but but really should, um, as they all touch different aspects, um, you know, of of business information, and bringing them together and and to uh, to to answer that question. And so they're bringing their their cross functional um, knowledge and pulling it. Uh, and to, to answer that business question. So huge knowledge uh, sharing that happens here, as well as we're looking for these guys to be the change agent for our future, the catalyst to infuse a new way of working, not only within their teams, but throughout their own organizations. So what, is, what does uh, uh, the four-day syllabus look like, right? So uh, is that it is we wanted folks to first get introduced to Tableau. So some folks have, were aware um, and, and know Tableau. Um, others had no exposure to it. So we, we did the online introduction um, that Tableau offers directly on their website. Then they come in and a four-day interactive hands-on training. What's infused throughout these four days is all about collaboration. We did uh, what we called huddles, getting people together, or talking about what they're going to experience through the um, each day. Um, doing some fun games, but focusing primarily on the first day, analytical and visualization theory, those best practices, the approach, then hands-on with Tableau training for two days, and then breaking out into their small subgroups uh, sub to take their business question, identify what, what, uh, how they're going to try to answer that, creating a charter, how they're going to work, asking their sponsors questions. So what was absolutely critical was that we had senior management participation throughout these four days. They committed to this project. They committed their time. It was very visible um, to the folks that were selected to be a part of it how important this is to the organization. So coming out of it, they have a plan of how they're going to do this. And they had three months to get it done. And they would schedule meetings. They would work in their sub-teams. They would use their teaching assistant. Uh, they would have homework. And at the end, they would present their, uh, their outcome um, at a show and tell, and we call them show and tell, to, the, to their business sponsors and to their line management. We just concluded our first study hall and it, um, uh, show and tell, and it was so exciting. And the energy and the positive, um, the positive movement towards this is, was truly infectious in the room. Um, so it's really exciting to see this actually, in theory, play out to, to what we've expected. The next part of our, our journey that I'd like to focus on and call out is our enabling technologies. Recognizing that we are a 100-plus-year-old company, and I keep on coming back to that, but and, and change is hard. So we need to, and I, I state this over and over again, of meeting the business where they are. So we need to provide some elements in order to make this stick. The first is, is a portal um, of being able to deliver our visualizations in a, in a manner that helps the business manage you know, their, their business, their work, their way. And that the visualizations are a part of it, but also how, um, training associated with it, collaboration, um, workflow. All these elements that are cap encapsulated within a portal um, is, is a critical part of how we deliver this so that it's seamless to the business and it fits together. Um, and that's, that's part of our project as well. The other critical part, and I'm going to show you a demo of, is, is linking our quantitative information to our qualitative and having that integrated in the input equals output. So data on its own really doesn't tell you anything. It's, it's the story that, that uh, drives that insight. And how do you connect those things together? So it's about linking insights to visualizations as well as issues or statusing. Um, and what was critical as we were working with the business is that they don't have to go to all these different places to do it, and that's what they're doing today. In, in 10 different decks or different SharePoint sites, if you guys can come up with a way to make this easier for us so that our input and our output are completely integrated, uh, you know, we would love you. Uh, and so uh, with that came up over and over again um, with working with the business, and we baked that into exporting capabilities. You know, as much as I have my, you know, no PowerPoint button or no Excel button, at the end of the day, it's how our organization communicates with each other is through PowerPoint. So we need to have robust exporting capabilities that enable the users to maybe take one viz on a dashboard or multi, um, you know, multi-generation of, of slides. And so that's also part of, of our project as well. 
And then what we really want to capitalize on is moving in this in this whole mobile um, capability environment. Change doesn't happen fast. I, I've already stated that, especially in an organization of ours. So although Tableau offers you know robust mobile capabilities, we're not at a place yet to capitalize on it, but we're pushing it. And we the whole premise of of this effort is to drive conversations and not presentations, and this is a big part of making that happen. So just want to share you with some screenshots of our requirements for our portal. Again, we're a work in progress. We're about a year in. Um, our requirements are done for this, um, and so we're all excited to start development. Um, but this just shows you our overall you know, place of, of where folks would get their business information, I, visual driven. Their um, visualizations will be in a, in, in a single spot. They'll be able to navigate through um, their visits, links um, to other relevant reports that would be associated with that viz. So it's, again, getting the business away from the pain point of having to go to multiple locations. Access to uh, Tableau site for training, other training visuals uh, or videos that might be around business rules, tip sheets, uh, and, and additional information to really make this community come to life. I mentioned um, showcasing and demoing uh, the, the qualitative um, and integrating that with, with the visualization. I'm going to do this through one of our phase one visits called the Operation Dashboard. And I'm going to demo this, and this workbook is designed to integrate um, some key information that we have in our warehouse about the project with uh, statusing, so where issues are and how, and how the severity of those issues, as well as driving the dialogue within our leadership teams on, on how to resolve those quickly. And that is part of all of our um, uh, leadership teams have these, these monthly meetings to talk about this. Can we make that process easier? Uh, and that's one of the things we were challenged to do. So I'm going to walk you through a very tailored down operations dashboard. And this tailored down operations dashboard is because it contains a lot of uh, sensitive information, right? So this has all been um, cut out, but the intent of how this works um, still applies here. So what you see is uh, a landing page, basically. And it provides a summary of the projects that would be within a therapeutic area or the portfolio, their statusing around timing, resources, and budget, and, and what does that statusing look like in terms of, um, you know, is it, is it um, a huge issue in terms of red, or is it on track, or is there a risk there, in, um, which is yellow. And then where's the source of that issue coming from? And these are different aspects in the organization of, so that we're able to also identify um, the source of those issues. So if I want to understand a little bit more what's happening in this space on Oncology A project, I can click and then up will come their, their one pager. And it contains information that's in our warehouse about that project, about the budget, um, Timelines were taken out here as well, but about the timeline, so it'll have a Gantt view similar to the view that you saw in the CrossViz, but it'll be relevant to obviously clin clinical um, and development plans, as well as the overall statusing. So this is the bridge from the summary view to, um, to their one pager. And then the bottom half of this is where the bulk of the conversations take place. What's the current status? What's happening with the project? And what are the issues? And how do I resolve them as quickly as possible? And so what we have developed here is, and, and again, our, we're a big company, so we're still on SharePoint 2007, and we're, we're using this platform to help push us to find a better solution. Um, but it's, it's a .NET kind of workflow where a form comes up, um, again, directly from the biz. I can put um, information directly in here, um, and then it will, um, update, you know, obviously in the form, I can click save, and then what will happen is that it stores it um, directly into our warehouse and presents it back onto the VIS. Again, eliminating the need for our, our folks on the project teams that are responsible for maintaining this to go to three different places to update. Okay, the last piece that I'd like to call out is how we're going to live into this. How are we going to operationalize this around governance and support model? 
So like we've done with this whole project is come up with a framework of how we're going to um, work on, on, on the governance and business role piece. And what we call this bridge, it's business rules, information, data governance team. And it includes people, process, and technology. And the tool part is all about our master data management piece. And then how do we govern that between policies, change management, training, roles and responsibilities. And, and that feeds into overarching how we manage these five tenants of Bridge. With process and data management, so there's a, a team of folks that are responsible for, for doing this, most of them within their day job, and there's some additional um, core team members there, for documenting how do we work now that we have one integrated warehouse. The data quality associated with that, so around you know, exception reporting um, in that nature. Security, so who can see, you know, what pieces of information or what visualizations. The technical architecture and design piece, ultimately making sure that our warehouse um, is able to um, be nimble enough for, for, uh, to, to meet those needs. And then change control, so as these visualizations evolve, you know, how do we manage changes? And then that feeds up into the data owner. So who's responsible for owning those data or uh, that data or those processes and maintaining them? Uh, the bridge team um, will make sure that that piece is, gets gets documented um, in a consistent way. And then making sure that the sponsors, those folks that are decision making, um, responsibilities for endorsing um, that change and making that um, you know then part of how we work. The other piece that I'd like to talk about too, moving into a steady state and support model, is how do we move and vision from a project, you know, to this way of working. And I talk about that a lot because we try not to focus on the tool. The tool is the enabler. It's it's the people that really make this work. And it's real cr critical that we have a huge focus on that, which we do. So the development piece, I already walked you through a lot of how we're doing that. Um, what we recognize, though, before we move to a steady state, we need this hypercare state, recognizing that as it comes out of from a project, before it can be a way of working, we need to make sure that we have a little bit more infrastructure and investment to, per to really kind of protect and, and foster and make it grow. So we, the Direct Connect is a, a very new space. We need um, uh, effort around there, resources, expertise to make sure that those connections work, that they make sense, that it's, it's working as it should. Execution around the whole bridge model, so when these businesses go live, what business rules you know, need to be enforced so that we know we have the data quality coming out and how are we holding folks that are responsible for that data accountable for that quality. And then um, more intense training, so making sure folks are comfortable around um, you know, how do, how do they own that viz, how do they update it, and then from a business perspective, how do they use it, such as how not getting lost in their data and then driving the wrong conclusions. And then as we move into steady state, this is where uh, it all starts to take hold um, and beyond just, just nurturing it, but actually creating that, those roots that are necessary for long-term sustainability. And that's around you know, taking those phase one vizs yeah, and evolving them. Could be phase two, delivering them on that portal that we talked about, actually putting a governance and, and, and management in place for Bridge, and then making sure that we have the technical expertise to support this, road mapping, uh, to make sure that we're able to, uh, to sustain this as we go into the future and changes occur. The other aspect about moving from a project to a new way of working and I talked about this too a lot, is the people aspect. What we've been finding is we're getting a lot of questions from, from management. They, okay, this is great, you have this project, you've done study hall, now what do I do with these people that are trained? I'm gonna tell them to go. And that's not really the right messaging. We have to develop the community, we have to align the inputs to the outputs, and we have to execute this in a very thoughtful way. And it's about creating the departments to work together, um, as well as to work across and line management playing the critical role of fostering this. So where the departments are growing the community, line management has to foster that collab collaboration within their groups as well as across. They also need to look at their goals and objectives, and they need to understand what else are they connected to and making sure that there's joint goals and objectives so that if they're working on answering business questions that they're pulling in the right folks into those conversations. 
And then how do we continue to evolve our skills and get better? Um, and that's about making sure that we're executing um, not only the, the VIZ development piece thoughtfully, but providing um, management getting involved in that. So challenge sessions in a very productive um, and supportive way so that they're looking at not only that individual VIZ that's answered the connection, uh, that answers that business question, but how that is connected across potentially other visualizations um, that, that exist. And that is one of the big aspects that we're doing right now with engaging line management as part of this. I'd like to summarize because we have many lessons learned, and I'm just going to uh, call out um, some, of the, some of the top ones. The biggest uh, first lesson learned that, that we got when we got started as our grassroots was that um, we recognized quite quickly we need to meet the business where they are. Uh, we were so excited about Tableau and the opportunities. We, you know, we took um, a, a, a group's data and we say and we developed some visuals and we threw back at them and we're like, oh my goodness, isn't this great? And they looked at that. They're like, yeah, that's great, but we still have to develop this deck over here. So we quickly learned that we needed to adjust our approach, and that's where the pod model came into fruition. It was like, okay, since these guys got to own it, why don't you do it? Um, and that's that's how that got started. Absolutely critical, we need joint business and IT leadership. Um, as you saw throughout throughout um, you know the, this discussion and this talk, there's a lot of connections to IT. The warehouse, absolutely critical, enabling technologies as well. Um, if we want the business to adopt, uh, these are the, these are some of the must-haves. And so now we have we have co-leads in this. The, this was completely business-driven um, from from the get-go, uh, and now we have joint IT leadership, which is fantastic. The other lesson learned is this bottom-up, top-down management, and. We actually knew this going in, so it's not so much of a lesson learned, but just a consideration for others that are in a similar spot. Uh, the study hall was truly a bottom up. We're creating this groundswell of change agents in the organization that are now connected and they see how they're connected to each other. The top down is obviously you know, from our, um, our CFO to our head of project management. These analytical groups are, are so highly engaged that we're not being prescriptive or forceful, they're, they're creating this supportive environment. And, and this is why we're able to, um, to foster this approach within the organization. This is a, kind of more around meeting the business where they are, engaging them as early as possible, not, but not just from the analytical side and, and, and the folks that are doing this, but the, but the, the recipient side as well. There's been um, a lot of concern around transparency of information. And the more that we talk about it, the more that we say we're going to learn, and quality is not going to be great as, um, as, as we come out of the starting gate, but the more we know, then the better the data is going to be. And the quality issue has always been there. It's just been hidden to people. Uh, so we look at this as a positive, and, and that's how we try to engage the business as a positive learning experience. Staying committed to our approach has been absolutely critical, and we questioned this a couple times throughout the past year, but learn and grow is the way to go. And we say that because you know, we've never been in this space before. We've, we've never taken such a huge organizational approach to this on the warehouse and then these new skills and, an, and a new enabler at the same time. We've done several aspects of it um, before, and it's all, all failed. Um, so this whole learn and grow is that we can then test some things, learn, apply those learnings, um, and move on has been absolutely critical. Conducting training before we have the data ready. There was a lot of apprehension from line management about doing this. It was, we really needed to do this because it's creating that groundswell, as well as getting people to understand the data and how the data is connected. And if we did not do this, we would be training uh, when it's really you know, too late. So we have an opportunity to do this in parallel, uh, and it's getting folks you know, not only accustomed to understand the data, but also building those visualization skills. And they can do that without the data model. So when the data model becomes available midpoint next year, these guys are going to be ready to go, and, and, the, and the, there's nothing that's going to stop them from adding business value. Inputs equals outputs. I say that a lot. I try to keep messages very simple, as you, as you can see, and, and creating kind of taglines around that. But inputs uh, equals outputs, really important. 
And the further away we are from inputs equals outputs, uh, the lack of transparency, the lack of quality, the more manipulation and reconciliation occurs. So I try to make sure that that's in the forefront of our minds because that's what's going to drive um, you know, the right behaviors. Developing a structured process and standards, none of this would be successful if we weren't thoughtful enough to put frameworks and structure and templates in a way of working around it. People need a roadmap to follow. They, they, they need a path. They're okay with taking a leap of faith of going with you um, if, if you give them a, a reason to believe, but they need to know how to follow that path. And I think that's been one of the things that we've done really well, um, and we've got some great people on this team uh, that, that really help make that happen. And then the technical support for the end-to-end -end execution, and I mean, between server performance and, and viz performance, right? Uh, the, the recipient of these vizs aren't going to care that you know J and J is a complex, I you know technical environment, and, and our servers just take that long to recycle the the, the information on the vizs. All they see is that it's taken 30 seconds for my viz to come, and that we're going to lose people right there. So making sure that we have the technical support for end-to-end -end execution on on the hardware, the software, the enabling technologies piece um, to really have the best possible user experience um, is real important to this project as well. So I want to thank you um, for participating in this discussion, and if would, would love any questions, if you. Uh, have questions after the fact or you're running into issues when you get back to your home organization, be happy to um, answer emails or network. Uh, I think one of the brilliant parts of this is that Tableau has created a community that's bigger than, than just us. And although we're doing it internally, I, I, the, the power that we all have together is, has been um, just such a great experience for us over the past year. So I welcome that. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.